Greetings, I'm Dr. Carl Nath, the Editor-in-Chief of Mayo Clinic Proceedings, and I am pleased to welcome you to the multimedia summary for the journal's July 2023 issue. There are three articles that have been selected as our Editor's Choice or Highlights articles this month. Our Editor's Choice this month is an original article entitled, Rising Rates of Suicide Behaviors and Large Unmet Treatment Needs among U.S. adults with a major depressive episode, 2009 to 2020. It is authored by Dr. Tana Bomashbach from Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and colleagues from the VA Connecticut Healthcare System in West Haven, Connecticut, and the University of Connecticut School of Medicine in Farmington, Connecticut. The prevalence of depression is such that there is a significant likelihood that any one of us and or a family member, a friend, an acquaintance, a colleague, a co-worker, a neighbor, may be burdened by this disease. And beyond this circle we know, there is a vast and growing number of people we don't know who are similarly burdened and struggle day by day with this disease. A disastrous and lastingly lamentable consequence of major depressive disorders is suicide. The present study of Bomersbach et al. provide grim statistics regarding recent trends in the incidence of suicidal ideation and suicide attempts among U.S. adults with a major depressive episode. Analyzing 2009 to 2020 data from the National Survey of Drug Use and Health to estimate suicidal ideation and suicide attempts, these investigators demonstrate that in individuals with a major depressive episode, the rates of both have increased over the past decade, in particular in racial minorities and individuals with substance use disorders. Notably, Bomishback et al. also demonstrate that in those individuals with past-year suicidal ideation or past-year suicide attempts, there was no significant increase in the use of mental health services. Approximately half of these individuals regarded their mental health needs as essentially unaddressed and or unmet, especially so for those individuals with suicide attempts as compared with those with suicidal ideation alone. Bomersbach et al. offer insights into the basis for and the significance of this widening gap between the increased incidence of suicidal ideation and suicide attempts and the relative lack of utilization of and access to mental health services. In this regard, the recent announcement by the Biden-Harris administration on May 18, 2023, during the Mental Health Awareness Month of May, of new resources and initiatives directed to the current mental health crisis in the U.S., in particular, suicide and its prevention, is to be warmly applauded. Life is a precious gift. Its taking bespeaks a profound and inconsolable personal agony and such taking of a single life is a loss to all humanity. More effective therapies for depression and more ready access to and more abundant mental health services are urgently needed for individuals with suicidal behavior. Our first highlight article this month is an original article entitled SGLT2 inhibitors are associated with reduced cardiovascular disease in patients with type 2 diabetes, an analysis of real-world data. It is authored by Dr. Wendy Wang and colleagues from the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and other national institutions. The discovery of sodium glucose co-transporter 2 SGLT2 inhibitors as blood glucose lowering agents was founded on the elegant yet simple thesis that such beneficial effects would accrue from the inhibition of this transporter activity on the apical membrane of the renal proximal tubule. An added and unexpected bonus that resulted from the development of these agents was the cardioprotective effect of these agents as observed in preclinical and clinical studies. Wang et al. provide real-world data 
that support these cardioprotective effects. Their study utilized the market scan databases and assessed the risks of cardiovascular disease in metformin maintained patients with type 2 diabetes when an SGLT2 inhibitor was added as a second line agent and compared with other second line agents added instead. Other second line agents included sulfonylureas, dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors, glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1 receptor antagonists, thiazolidinines dions, and insulin. The cardiovascular disease outcomes included stroke, atrial fibrillation, myocardial infarction, and heart failure. The significant findings in this study were that SGLT2 inhibitors added as a second-line agent compared with these other agents was associated with a reduced risk for overall cardiovascular events, as well as for individually stroke, atrial fibrillation, myocardial infarction, and heart failure, and that the risk of cardiovascular events was comparable for the four different SGLT2 inhibitors examined in these studies. In additional analyses, the use of SGLT2 inhibitors was associated with reduced risk for each cardiovascular event when compared individually with all other second-line agents except GLP-1 receptor antagonists. This study by Wang et al. adds to findings from clinical trials and real-world data indicating the cardioprotective effects of SGLT2 inhibitors for the following specific reasons. First, while SGLT2 inhibitors are recommended as second-line agents to metformin in type 2 diabetes, there are few, if any, other specific studies that have specifically evaluated SGLT2 inhibitors as second-line therapy in this context. Second, SGLT2 inhibitors are recommended as second-line therapy in type 2 diabetes in patients with existing cardiovascular disease. Wang et al. showed that such use of SGL2 inhibitors was associated with less risk of the development of overall cardiovascular disease, as well as its subtypes, stroke, myocardial infarction, atrial fibrillation, and heart failure in patients who were without and thus yet to develop overt cardiovascular disease. Third, the study by Wang et al. is based on a large database using real-world data, attributes that add to its clinical significance. Serendipity in medical therapeutics is wonderfully reflected when agents developed for a specific purpose have unexpected salutary effects elsewhere, such as the case of the cardiovascular benefit of SGLT2 inhibitors. Our second highlight article is a concise review entitled Post-COVID Conditions. It is authored by Dr. Michael Mueller and colleagues from Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. This article is introduced with a call out to three articles on various aspects of the post-COVID syndrome previously published during the pandemic in the March 2022 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Mueller et al. update this topic, distilling the essence of current knowledge and outlining areas of uncertainty and ignorance. This review summarizes the criteria for the varied definitions of post-COVID conditions as articulated by a Mayo Clinic Delphi study, the National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control, and other agencies. Criteria so considered include the need for testing, the time after the first infection, whether post-COVID conditions are the most plausible working diagnoses, and the occurrence of common symptoms and functional impairment. Mueller et al. emphasize that the history should focus on symptoms that occur in three distinct phases, pre-COVID-19, acute COVID-19, and post-COVID-19, with the latter broadly categorized as either a fatigue predominant or pain predominant syndrome. The physical examination should exclude in particular 
relevant alternative diagnoses by searching for evidence of, for example, orthostatic hypotension, and for signs pointing to hematologic, endocrine, rheumatologic, neurologic, and malignant diseases. Testing may involve as a base a comprehensive metabolic panel, complete blood counts, and a sedimentation rate. And thereafter, testing should proceed along accepted concepts of discriminative testing and the consideration of the pretest odds of disease. However, given the recognized challenge in either ruling out credible alternative diagnoses such as adrenal insufficiency, hypothyroidism, rheumatologic diseases, numerous others as well, or ruling in post-COVID conditions, diagnostic approaches may be modified as clinically indicated. The authors provide a very helpful algorithm in evaluating and managing patients with post-COVID conditions, and they emphasize that the essential management framework should be symptom management, rehabilitation, reassurance and support, and therapies to reduce sympathetic hyperactivity. Medications that are useful for reducing symptoms are discussed, and those that should be avoided are underscored, such as opiates and benzodiazepines. A number of non-pharmacologic therapies may be helpful, and these include, for example, meditation, biofeedback, cognitive rehabilitation, among others. Mueller et al. are to be commended for providing this invaluable and timely review that emphasizes pragmatic therapeutic approaches geared to bettering the functionality and well-being of patients unfortunately afflicted with this debilitating and mysterious condition. You can access these highlights and Editor's Choice articles free of charge during the entire month of July. Please visit our Mayo Clinic Proceedings website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org where you'll find links to our social media by clicking the buttons at the bottom of the home page or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. On our YouTube channel, you'll find full-length author interviews called Insights and our MCP 60-second video article synopses. Our website also includes our Mayo Clinic Proceedings Issue Summary and Author Insight Podcast Recordings, which are available from our website on the home page as well as through iTunes. You'll also find our online features only and many news stories posted in the News from the Editor Carousel on our website homepage that are based on articles published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. And finally, you'll see other free content as well as articles published online in press. As always, we greatly thank you for your interest in and your support of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.